Welcome back. It's time to talk about Mario Balotelli now. We haven't talked about him since about this time last week, I think it was. And uh, since then, he's had yet another bust up, this time with Roberto Mancini. Jason, what, uh, what does the future hold for him? He played incredibly played yesterday, 20 minutes for City, but uh, some, some pretty ugly scenes yeah. in the week. I mean, it's, it's been a terrible season for him. Obviously, he had a very good European Championship. We thought, hoped then that he'd come back and would be the player he could be. Obviously, he did very well for Italy. And it's been awful for him at Manchester City and, and he's let them down time and time again I, I personally think City now would happily sell him if they could but the problem is who, who will take him on, on the money they paid for him and on the wages he's on I think he is damaged goods to a certain extent the best chance at this probably this stage if they want to do it is to get him out on loan um, certainly there was discussion last summer about selling him then um, and it's all around the whole idea of getting another striker in and clearly City is saying to Mancini, well, OK, fine, you want to get another striker in, but you have to sell either Balotelli or, or Dzeko or somebody's going to have to go, which is fair enough. You've got four top-line strikers. You can't keep them all and buy another one. And I, but I think, I think now, despite what Mancini is saying in public, I think he would, he would sell Mario Balotelli. Yeah. And, and is he damaging the image of, uh, of the Premier League champions? I think he is to a certain extent. You know, I, I think what Manchester City are keen to do is to try and... Um, shift some emphasis onto what they're doing in the wider community, into the Etihad campus. Yeah. You know, and we all know, we, you know, we've all been there, we all know actually what a good club it is, mm -hmm. you know, and how well run it is and how they are. These guys are not just in it for, you know, the short term and to buy up the best players in the world. They're in it for the long term, you know, and they see it as, as a long term project. And that is all, every time Balotelli appears in the pages having a bust up or, you know, one story after another, it does detract from that, without yep. a doubt. Uh, yeah, and that is something, which is why it was rather strange, there was actually, was it a quote from Mancini uh, uh, saying that uh, actually the, the Sheikh Mansour was yeah. the one who, who wanted to keep Balotelli? So he was his favourite player. Mm. He said he was his favourite player, he <clears> said he was like, you know, he, he was making Manchester City news around the world, you know, but... I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's only any, any news is good news, I, I guess, but I, th I, think, he, I think he is. I, I, I agree with Jason, I do think the issue is, when, when the story was out last week, about, uh, or the week before last, about the tribunal, um, that he eventually didn't go to, um, to appeal against the two weeks fine. The astonishing thing about it was he's on £170,000 a week. Now, he's on that until June 2015. Yeah. So he's not going <laughs> to kiss goodbye to that money. No. And no one at the moment, every time one of these stories comes out, then another potential buyer says, well, I, actually, we've had it. No, I, think no, Mancini, I think Mancini would see it as the <coughs> ultimate sign of failure on his part if he sold B Balotelli. He's defended him for so long, over so much. He believes, he believes he's one of the world's best players. And he has <coughs> said that. And I've talked to people who've talked to him behind the scenes. And he still believes he's a great player. You look at him, he, he believes it. And he would like nothing better than for Balotelli to prove him right. But and to show do us, do he would like that. <coughs> He would this like that. He would like that. He wants that to happen. And he reckoned, and we saw flashes of it at the Euros, brilliant goal and all that, that it is possible. So Mancini wants to dig in and he wants I, to... I just this. think that Sean has reached a point where this is saying more about Mancini than yeah, it is about I, Balotelli. I agree. And I, I think agree what happened that. on the training ground on Thursday said more about Mancini than it did about Balotelli. His reaction was not the reaction you, 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 should, you should get of a Premier League manager who's in charge of a big club like Manchester City. I thought he, the pictures, if any, and obviously Balotelli did a terrible tackle on Scott Sinclair, mm -hmm. He, would, he refused to leave the trading ground, fine. But then, then Mancini's reaction, I think, said a lot more about him than yeah. about Balotelli. Why, why, does Man why does Mancini react like that? Isn't he an incredibly successful manager in Milan? He's got short shorts. Because he's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's done it all his life, hey, basically, listen, as a player listen, and a manager. Don't forget, though, Jason. I mean, if that was, like, you know, in, in, in the Brian Clough era, you know, if there was someone like that, we'd say, oh, like, you know, we, we do... No, that's a fair point. We'd yeah. admire it. I mean, because it's Mancini and we, we, we perceive him as being a bit temperamental. I agree, actually, because... When Mancini the next day said, oh, it was just, it was, it was over mm. in two no problem, you sort of read that and you sort of suspected he actually thought maybe it was a bit more... Yeah, because there's two ways he could have gone, couldn't he? He could have said, that's it, he called him out, that's it, we've had enough, you know, he's, mm. he had too many chances. He didn't decide to do that, he went the other way and tried to calm it down, and I thought that was partly him mm. thinking, maybe I went a bit too far. Yeah, what, what about this problem, Sean, that, that City have with the public footpath that runs <laughs> through... <laughs> Which is fantastic, could have been built media way. <laughs> uh, it's, it's should well, be it, renamed that, shouldn't why, it? Why can they, I don't understand why they can't import a load of trees that are already grown you can't, you need, you need permission. on their side. Yeah. No, on need, their you, side of the... Yeah, yeah. Be, you, can't, you can't put a tree even 50 yards Listen, inside the grass. No. Giving them ideas, Sean. It, 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 not if they're over a certain height. Well, you try and do it in your own garden. Well, can they put a fence up? You can't, you, you can't put a tree... <laughs> you can't put a tree in your own garden. No. Well, not, not, not over you, a certain yeah, height. Yeah, not if you... Yeah. Okay. This is, that's, maybe, that's the problem. <laughs> maybe that's the problem that City have. But this is why can't you put a fence up? But, 
but not allowed. When they moved to Car when they moved to Carrington, <laughs> is this just is this just a, a mega oversight that oh there's a public football but no one realises that photographers will one, one day take pictures of the most talked about football club in the world? No, it, it can happen, O'Neill, because I think if I'm not mistaken, when Everton moved to their um, new complex of Finch Farm just on the outskirts of Liverpool. Um, I think they had an issue with um, with strong winds coming from the Mersey estuary, mm. and they and they wanted to, to erect <coughs> trees or a fence, and weren't allowed to by the council. Right. Are you so saying <coughs> you can't plant a tree in your own garden? Depending on the height of the, yeah. the, the, the tree. All right, sure thank you. Is it, is but the fact of the matter is, it, it's a question. I, I, I think I think the question is really. You know, City saying, well, some people say, oh, well, you know, it, it's because photographers can take these pictures. The, this happens on every other training ground. Does it happen on every other training think, ground? I think I it happens a bit it. more in the City. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're lucky. Just, just, because, lucky of, just because of their yeah. profile and who they are. Okay. Jason, should, should Balotelli have played yesterday, given what happened with Mancini on Thursday? He came off the bench for 20 minutes. He set up the, the third goal, wasn't it, I think? And be interesting should if, he have been if, on if the it had been a Premier League match, I'm not sure he would have played. I think you, they needed him because obviously Aguero's yeah. injured and he's, he's got, you know, as I say, only £170,000 a week. He's got, to, he's got to play sometimes. And an FA Cup game was a good one to, to, to involve him in. Clearly, again, I think following on from Friday, and maybe that was partly Mancini's thinking, you know, if he, if he, if he had been hard run him on Friday, it would have been more difficult for him mm. to play on him on Saturday. But he tried to calm down the situation, so therefore he was back in the squad. But it wasn't so long ago that he was just simply leaving him out of the squad completely and saying he wasn't even wouldn't training you, properly. Wouldn't you be disappointed if they got rid of him, though? Would, wouldn't it spoil your Sundays? You wouldn't be able to talk about him, you wouldn't be able to chat well, about him. Well, you can take your pick <coughs> with the side. I mean, he's funny, yeah, Sean, Sean, but what I about City's great entertainment. supporters? Because I think it's a bit of a car it, crash. Is it entertainment? Though, because right? it's City supported mixed reception yesterday when yeah. he came on. Some inevitably cheered him, they see him as a hero. But other, others are beginning to see a different side to Balotelli and, and booed him pretty angry, pretty upset with his behaviour last week. So, I'm, I, I am a bit with Mancini. I still you think... want to talk about trees again, don't I you? Still, <laughs> no, no, I still think in there somewhere is a great player trying to get out. There I is, really there do. Is Sean, but is he in the I really right, do. Is he in the right environment? That's the other thing. Well, the right, what sure. the heck's the right environment? Well, the Where right? he, when he was in Italy, he wasn't in the right environment either, because he was well, booked up to not, a Mourinho. Clearly, it's clearly not what's, working at the What's the right him, environment? I, I also think, like sure, and, and I know people say that sort of uh, all the time, that there is a great player waiting to get out there. I don't think we've seen enough evidence of that. I haven't seen enough evidence He's a good of player. player. I'm not sure he's a great player. I'm not sure he's a 170 grand a week player. I'm not sure he's the type of player who was... In my paper, the Sunday Mirror today, he should have a clause in his contract no, no. saying, "I want a million pounds if I win the Ballon d'Or." That tells you something. Well, maybe about they him. put that in, think, "Well, there's no chance for that." And if there well, is a chance, that's fantastic. Just tell you something about him. It tells you something about him. Well, they don't have to put it in, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. And and he's, 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 on he's on the list. He's on the list. Maybe it tells me about his ego, though, as well, Neil. I mean, if you had, it's an interesting clause to have in your contract. You know, yeah. I win the Ballon d'Or, therefore I get a million pounds. But would Lionel Messi have a clause like that in his contract? Really? Cristiano yeah, Ronaldo probably, would have clauses right, yeah, probably does, yeah. like, like that in their, in but their contract. But they don't have to agree know. to it. So you don't have to have that. They can say no. No, no I agree. I think, I think well, the, problem, the problem I have with the whole situation is, I think, and I think this goes to the heart of the, the City dressing room, is I think there are players at City who, are, who have been for quite some time fed up with this slideshow, oh, yeah. and they Definitely. believe... He has been indulged for, for, since he's been there, frankly. Yeah. And there, is a, there has been a lack of equality, almost. And that Mancini has been very hard on certain individuals. Yeah, that Carlos room. Tevez, for example. Certain, and, and, and of some even well, you more think recently. He was hard on Tevez. Yes. More, more, hey? I think he wasn't necessarily. I think, he, I think Tevez made a huge mistake going back to Argentina, but I think the run up to that, yeah. I think it wasn't necessarily fair on him at mm -hmm. certain times. No, I, I think yeah. some of the stuff he said recently about Joe Hart was, was certainly not fair. And I think some of the players in that dressing room, there are some big personalities there, some very strong personalities. They're looking at him thinking, mm -hmm. hang on a minute, he's continually, yeah. continually yeah. indulging one player. If you're going to be hard, be hard on everyone. Don't, don't, you've got to be consistent. I, I think that's the problem in the dressing room there. You know, we've yeah, seen well, it, does Mancini, how does Mancini come out of all this, though, Andy? I mean, is he, has his reputation been affected? We can talk about Balotelli every week here, but it's, it's Mancini. This is a problem for Mancini to resolve because he's the, he's the manager who signed him from Inter Milan. Yeah, and I, I, think, I, think, you're right. I think he is a project of Mancini's, thereby, thereby if it doesn't work out and it's not working out, then, then, then the, the collateral damage will be with Mancini. And don't forget, he's also overlooking or not reacting as strongly to um, Balotelli's situation on the pitch as to others. For example, we've seen Balotelli argue with a, a player about taking a free kick. Mm -hmm. Virtually every time he's substituted, Balotelli just walks straight down the tunnel. Mm. Manchester United those, game, yep. Those obvious signs of disrespect, you know, you would expect Mancini, someone as, as strong as Mancini, strong-willed as him, you, you know, w would be having a real go. Instead, these things tend to get overlooked. And then he'll come out and he'll say, well, I'll give him 100 chances. Now, Jason's right. There's other players there who might think, well, you know what, we, we, we don't even have one or two.
Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't have one or two. This guy's mm. getting 100 chances. I mean, Scott Sinclair will be saying something like that. I want to talk about some of the players, uh, some of the other Man City players who could be leaving as well. This story on the back of the Sunday Express as well, Jason. Real Madrid wants Sergio Aguero. The news broke last week of um, uh, Aguero splitting yeah. up with Diego Maradona, Maradona's uh, daughter, Giannina. That's obviously sad for his, his personal life, but professionally, could you see him moving back? Yes, I could. Really? I could see that happening, but I think it might all depend on Falcao. Because I think, obviously, Real Madrid's number one target is Falcao. If they can get Falcao, then that might change things. I've certainly, they've, they've shown interest in Aguero in the past, and why wouldn't they? Um, mm. He's a sort of striker they would want in their, in their ranks. But I think they, they are all, all fighting for Falcao at the moment. Obviously, Chelsea are, City are to a certain extent. What do we think? think because yesterday, Atletico said that, I think they said that There's he an had agreement. a deal yeah. with, with Real Madrid. It's very, well, very unusual, isn't it? Atletico mm. would, Atletico Madrid well, player the way was potentially signing for Real Madrid. The way it was explained to me was that, yeah, it is absolutely, if he was Spanish, this would be an almost impossible deal to happen. Because he's Colombian, they think it's possible to go from Atletico Madrid to Real Madrid. There isn't that same okay. sort of sense around a non-Spanish player, apparently. He can do it. It's possible. It's something that can happen. And I think Real are pushing quite hard, because they obviously they know Chelsea are pushing quite hard. Everyone's pushing hard. Chelsea have been back and forth, back and forth, talking to George Mendes, his agent, and so have Real Madrid. And I think, obviously, they're pushing to try and get an agreement in place. The slight sort of complication, obviously, is whether Mourinho stays there, because we're not quite sure where that leaves everyone. But come what may, they will, they, will, they will want Falcao, and obviously there could be a knock-on effect if they don't get him, in terms of then trying to go for Aguero. It'd be a big miss, Sean, wouldn't it, if Aguero well, feels to leave? There's a, there's a bit of a feeling that Aguero's not really been at it this season mm. so much, that, um, well, not as not, not scored as, as many goals. Not scored as start. many goals. Yeah. Not, uh, there's been a little bit of criticism from City fans, but, you know, as we've learned, the prob sort of domestic problems that could mm. be affecting, injury problems as well, and he is a top, top player, mm. and I don't think you'd happily want to get rid of Aguero, no, you really no, wouldn't. No, no, so no. Not. Because yeah. if you get rid of Aguero, you might have to keep Balotelli. Then. You wouldn't <laughs> like that, would you? Yeah, no, well, certainly. One's a top, one's a top player, Sergio Aguero, <laughs> and one's a bad boy, isn't he, Mario Balotelli? Okay, we're going to talk Newcastle next.